Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with Daily FX. Today is Tuesday, March 7th, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. Uh, dollar index is continuing to push slightly higher this morning, 101.76 right now. Slow morning, as it were, among the major components of the dollar index. Euro dollar is just barely pulling back right now. But it's pound who's on the move. Pound dollar itself is down about 0.3% on the day, uh, seeing that it's breaking through a level that we previously identified on our chart. The swing low that we had on Friday last week, just in case. And sure enough, we're probing down below said level. And when we take a look at this on a technical perspective, you can see here how momentum has really picked up to the downside the last few days. Price below the 813.34 daily EMAs, MACD now trending lower below that signal line, and stochastics below zero. It looks like we're due for a retest of the trend line that carried us off of the lows that we had uh, back on October 7th, which was that pound flash crash, and then again on January 16th. That would call for a move down towards that 120, 25 figure or so. Uh, Brexit news really not having much of an impact, that there's not anything significant out today, but I would take a step back and look at the fact that we have two separate Brexit bills right now working their way through Parliament. Uh, one, of course, which would be to allow Brexit to have, uh, or Parliament to have a meaningful vote on Brexit before they actually leave the EU, which is not what the government wants. They want to have a situation where once they trigger Article 50, if the situation isn't settled within two years, then they just are ejected, so to speak, from the European Union. The other would be so that the uh, government doesn't have to pay, you know, the divorce bill. So we're watching our way uh, uh, as these things make themselves through Parliament. And honestly, one would have to consider that, you know, in the case of the second bill, there agreeing to something like that wouldn't necessarily be the greatest uh, step forward towards EU UK competition or even. Uh, working together in a certain sense moving forward. Cooperation would be much more difficult if the UK says, you know what, we're going to leave the EU, but we're not going to pay what we owe on the way out the door. I can't imagine the EU is going to want to play ball with that. Um, the pound is under pressure from a number of angles. If you look look at Euro pound here, actually, we're starting to break the trend line that we have going back to October 7th and January 16th highs here as well. Uh, this falling wedge that we have been watching has resolved itself to the top side, and now we're starting to break this longer-term trend line. MACD stochastics turning higher. Price moving average envelope is in full bullish mode. This really speaks to why we were so patient on this 83.40 level. We kept saying for the longest time that it's not a head and shoulders pattern until we get down through the neckline. And I hope that this reinforces that view that you need to be patient when you're watching one of these head and shoulders patterns. For now, it could merely just be a continuation uh, effort that we're seeing on the charts. And before we get resolution lower, we, we need to see that key level obviously broken. So for now, price looks like the path of least resistance is higher, if you will. You know, you talk about what's going on with the euro itself, and certainly there's a case to be made uh, that as French election concerns are diffused and Brexit, hard Brexit fears ramp up, then euro pound may want to find itself trading higher. Uh, before we switch over to the euro, though, pound yen here is making some waves today as we're coming back into the swing low from a month ago, February 7th. We weren't able to crack down through there last week, but if we are able to do so today, it would signal that this triangle has more legitimacy and immediately that would put focus on the base in that 136 45 area, roughly a 200 pips down uh, from here. For what it's worth, we haven't seen price close above that 13 EMA uh, since we got the breakdown on February 24th. So a close through said level, uh, maybe even something a little bit more near term than the 34. We can say the 21, for example. That would be a point of interest in which we would say, all right, maybe this sell off isn't picking up. Um, but with respect to the euro today, we just saw that we had another new poll come out regarding the French elections from IFOP. It was conducted through March 2nd to March 6th. Relative to their last poll, we actually see that Macron is gaining a little bit more ground versus Le Pen. Uh, IFOP saying that. The odds of a Macron victory have increased from 24.5 to 25.5, and Le Pen has gone down from about uh, 27 to 26.5. So not 
too significant of a move, a 1.5% swing. But again, as we watch these polling figures come out, we've noticed that these French-German uh, oat boon spreads have started to narrow, perhaps a sign that the market is viewing the French elections with less consternation, less concern than they were just a few months ago. Again, we have the first round of elections in, in April. If no one garners 50% of the vote, then it goes to a second round of elections in May. As far as we're concerned right now, it definitely looks like we are heading towards two rounds of voting for France. Next week, don't forget, Dutch elections are on March 15th, the same day as the FOMC meeting. So it should be a nice day for volatility, particularly in Euro uh, dollar. Speaking of the dollar more generally here, we haven't seen rate odds move all that much since Janet Yellen's speech the other day. March rate hike odds are still 96%, September 72.2%, and December 54%. And so uh, what we're looking at here is a situation where rate hike odds have moved in such a manner that would suggest markets aren't expecting, say, more rate hikes this year, but they are expecting them to just occur on an earlier timeline. Before it was June and December, now it's simply March and September. Look, we really want to see the third rate hike for December get at least a 60% probability before we can even start talking about it as a legitimate outcome. Over the last 21 years, the Fed has not raised rates once unless the front month contract for Fed funds has been pricing at, at least a 60% chance. So, you know, again, we've saw two rate hikes priced in going into the beginning of this year. There's still two rate hikes priced in right now. And until that changes materially, although the yield curve is being, say the rate expectations curve is being pulled forward, it's not necessarily getting steeper. Uh, and, and certainly if you look at, say, a uh, 210 or 530 uh, yield spread, those differentials are starting to narrow once more, suggesting that we may not see a sustained break higher in inflation, a sustained break higher in growth expectations as the Fed goes about its hiking cycle. Uh, one thing I want to keep an eye on for today as well with respect to dollar yen is that we're still trading within this shorter term triangle. And it looks like we're trying to build a base above this one. 1080 area. Um, right now, I think that what's going on with Japanese equity markets will be of particular interest. So while we wait for dollar yen to get through 114.95, keeping an eye on the Nikkei 225 here, it looks like we're in the middle of an ascending triangle right now. And certainly this will have some strong implications, I would think, for what's happening with dollar yen. If dollar yen resolves itself higher, then the Nikkei 225 would likely as well. Just for a point of comparison here, putting dollar yen up on this chart with the Nikkei 225, you can see here that the two have started to move in tandem, especially since the election. The last few weeks, they haven't been moving together so much so significantly, but nevertheless, if dollar yen does see a break higher, given what we've seen in the past, we would be inclined to think that, again, Nikkei 225 breaks higher, dollar yen breaks higher, uh, and in that regard, we probably also have to see U.S. yields break higher as well. They're all more or less moving in tandem here. Certainly, if that occurs, then there are implications for Dixie moving higher, and if a dollar index is able to resolve itself to the top side, then that should be a further impetus for U.S. yields to continue their march uh, up alongside the greenback, right? That's really it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, you can always reach out to me through the Daily FX real-time news feed. Stock tips on Twitter at CVECUFX. You can always email me, CVECU at dailyfx.com. If I don't speak to you before then, good luck trading the next day. I'll be back tomorrow morning with our uh, weekly trading Q&A, 6 Eastern, 11 GMT. You can always register for that by going on over to the webinars calendar on dailyfx.com, scrolling on down to our Wednesday trading Q&A and entering your information there ahead of time. Otherwise, I will talk to you soon.